how's camp been going for you so far? This, I guess the second camp after the first. I was going to say the longest camp in the history of camps. Honestly, it's been good, all things considered. Like, they've done a good job of, like, pushing us and then down and back, pushing us and down and back, because, like I said, this is the longest camp I've ever been a part of. So, like, to, for them to have the feel to make it something manageable to where we're still able to get something out of it but not overwork ourselves, they're doing a good job. Do you like that, the whole, I mean, because this is kind of a unique, like, you had the first week of training camp, and then you had your four preseason games all in a row, and then you have, like, another week and a half off. Is that, do you, do you like that as opposed to the having, you know, more preseason games throughout this week, like maybe another training camp? No, I don't prefer, no. Preseason games are, yeah. we'd rather just get through them. Practice is more valuable at that point. Yeah. But I will say, this is one of my first years really practicing. I played on veteran teams up until this point, so this is, this. like, I mean, I'm going in my fifth year in the NBA, but I'm not used to practicing this much. So, like, it's been a learning curve for me. Huh? What you like? It's just different. Like, I, I've, this is my first time experiencing it, so. What do you like being one of the veteran guys on the team now instead of one of the young guys? I'm still trying to figure that out. Because sometimes I forget that, like, these kids are really... They're not kids. kids, yeah, I didn't mean to say kids. Um, these dudes are really listening to what I have to say, because for 80% of them, I have four times as many years in the league as them. And it's just been a weird experience, because I've always been on the other end of just trying to be a sponge and, and soaking up what the vets have to say. So I'm just trying to remind myself that I get, there is a different responsibility, and I'm just trying to be a good steward of that responsibility and being able to pass on whatever knowledge I've been able to accumulate over my years. What's the realistic potential for this team defensively? It seems like there's a lot of good pieces, but didn't shift that well during preseason, but preseason. I don't know. I, mean, I wouldn't know what to, I don't know, how do you quantify defensive potential? Like, uh, I think we have the potential to play really hard on defense, which is saying more than I think most teams can say. Like, we have the the willingness and the like athleticism to be a scrappy team, but I, mean, I, I don't know how you really quantify defensive talent. Based on how you guys ended last season defensively with Derek, and uh, Williams lower out, things kind of went downhill a little bit, but now you've added Brogdon, and of course, Robert. How big of an issue is that defensive defensively? Huge. Huge. I mean, I, I remember talking about it in my press conference. Having shot blockers at the rim changes the way everyone can guard. And it just makes it fun for me because I can do a little bit more. I can push envelope, if you will. And Malcolm is a savvy vet on both ends of the court and so much stronger than people realize. So, like, you can't really get by him because his forearm is going to stop just about everything you try to throw at him. But, yeah, I, like I said, we have the pieces to do to do things. I just wish I could give you a... Like I just had a visual or a term for what it what it could manifest into. What do you think Scoot needs to do most to improve his defender at this level? Because obviously he has some ability there, He's like, desire. I was talking to Jeremy about this on the on the bench one game. You ever see kids who grow to be way bigger and stronger than everyone else early on, and they're just accidentally hurting people? Like they're accidentally like stumbling and like hurting the other kids. That, that, that's Scoot at this point. He's so strong and athletic and so young. He's got to learn how to use those things as a to his advantage as opposed to having them used against him. Because because he's so strong, he can blow up a lot of plays, he can get over screens. But these savvy vets, like if, if you put too much, if you apply too much force, he's gonna end up being a foul. And so I think for him it's just finding that balance. And then it's always gonna be hard for him. Like the ref's not giving you any benefit of the doubt. So like I think he's gonna learn. It's trial by error, and it's gonna be frustrating, but he's lucky because he has he has the intangibles, he has the strength, he has the athleticism. And now it's just a matter of coupling that with the experience to put it all together. Overall, how do you think Scoot has gotten in terms of like from this first preseason game to now he's played four preseason games? How comfortable more how much more comfortable overall do you think he's been? I think my biggest takeaway is Scoot is just Humility and poise. Like he's been an insanely humble kid just for all the hype that is behind him. That could definitely like, kind of change the young mind. And then just his poise and the pressure to be a point guard of a team that wants to win games. And being able to handle that well and handle it and, and have success and be able to, to lead us has been really impressive.